Hello, beautiful beings, divine souls. It's Eve here with the July forecast. And I'm going to start with the astrology, with some numerology, and then I'll follow with the messages that I already pre-shuffled, picked the cards, and I put them out. So there's messages and guidance here for us. I will have timestamps for that below if you simply want to dive into the messages. However, the astrology is quite big for July. And we have two big events. We're following the moon energy right now. We've got the new moon in Cancer. We have the full moon in Capricorn. We have the Syrian activation portal going on right now as I'm filming this. And then we had this story though start back at the summer solstice. So the minute we entered Cancer on the eve, I think it was the afternoon evening of June 20th, we then went in the next day on June 21st into the first of two full moons in Capricorn at very at the very beginning of Capricorn at one degree of Capricorn. That in and of itself was a giant portal of energy. And you may have noticed certain events happening happening in your life at that time as we hit that July, that June 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd going through that first week of the summer solstice, which would have completed June, there may have been events or energy shifting in your life that were making themselves very present because that was the first of two full moons in Capricorn. So there is a play or a story unfolding here within that energy of Capricorn, both on an individual level and a societal level. Capricorn rules all of the systems of law. It rules the it rules civilization, all of the different governments we have because it rules the governments, the military. It rules corporations. Capricorn is about how we create civilization, how we create careers and make money and stabilize. Therefore, there could be things happening in your life that pertain to this area. Maybe there's things happening in your career right now. Perhaps you're wanting to build your career. You know, Capricorn is one of the three earth energies and it does speak to the foundations of our life. So perhaps something within your foundation itself is changing because to have two full moons in Capricorn is a very rare event. And that second one is on July 21st. And for the numerology, we've got the nine energy going that day. And it's all about completing things. Old patterns need to be wrapped up. Whatever cycle you're in, you're being given a time frame now, time frame now because that full moon on July 21st is gonna be leading us in to the Lion's Gate, into the Mercury retrograde in August. It's gonna be a pivotal full moon. And so I also wanna look at what's going on right now, but that's further on in July. Currently, as we enter July, on July 2nd, 1st, we entered into what's called the Syrian Activation Portal or Gateway and it reaches its culmination on 7-7, which is the, the date for it every single year. Now it's always culminating from around July 2nd through the 7th and sometimes into the 8th of July. It just depends on the year that we are in. Now this year, it's very, very powerful because we have it happening in conjunction with the new moon in Cancer. So we just had the new moon in Cancer here on this day when I'm filming this, July 5th. It's a 20 day numerologically. 20 is all about coming back into balance, wanting to balance out our lives, looking at all the different partnerships in our life because two is about doing things in twos, okay? It's about the partnerships in our life, the relationships. When we apply it to the tarot though, 20 is judgment. That means that divine justice, if you will, and judgment, these two cards go with one another. Judgment is about something 
that's meant for you coming in and something that isn't perhaps leaving. Judgment can also be showing you new pathways and what in your life isn't healthy or isn't working for you anymore. So as we go from July 5th and that beautiful Cancerian energy, which is gonna light up all of the water signs beautifully and the earth signs. So if you're Taurus, if you're Capricorn, if you're Virgo, if you're Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, this new moon is a really powerful new moon for you. And you have that energy somewhere in your chart. Go look, it may not be your sun sign. It may be your moon sign. Could be Venus, could be Mars, could be Mercury, but we all have it somewhere. Then know that that's where in your life there is going to be an emphasis here. And that beautiful watery earth blend is showing us two things. One, that we've got to follow our heart. We've got to follow the nurturance of our emotional well-being. Because when we don't really nurture our joy and our well-being, we become unhealthy. We become unhealthy physically. We become unhealthy mentally. Things in our life go out of balance. Our finances don't show up the way we want them to. So the number two and the number 20 is about bringing something back into balance in your life. And then on July 6th and 7th, we're going now from the numerology of 20 to 21 to 22. So on 7-7, seven, seven, we've got the number 22, the master builder, the master architect. As we move into it though, and the full completion of this Syrian activation portal, we're hitting this new moon energy, which is always an influx of new energy. And we have the energy of the 20, and then on the 6th of July, we're gonna have the energy of 21. And that's all about communication. In numerology, two and one is three. It's all about speaking, really speaking your truth and being authentic. In the tarot, it's the world card. You know, the world card follows judgment. So we know already that the month of July and just in the first week of July, we are being presented with where in our life something is going to start completing or needs to end. You can try to give it another chance, give it another go if you, if you really feel guided to, and then just be with it every day in the now. Okay, so the decision is going to be up to you if you want to give it another chance. For those of you that do, whether this is within your love life, your family, your work, your home life, whatever it is, your friendship corner, you've got two, two decisions in front of you, two pathways. The one is you know this is not meant for you anymore. You know you want change, you want something new. So you have all of July, and then you might even have all of August, because we're gonna go into Mercury retrograde, which slows everything down. If you need time to figure this out, to do this, please know that you have that time. For others of you, you're ready, you wanna jump on it right now. You're, you're gonna tell me, Eve, can I do this by the full moon on July 21st or within the two weeks that follow that? And my answer will be absolutely. And for those of you that are unsure, you need a longer timeline because there's many things that have to come into play. You've got to organize it. You've got to prepare. You've got to get information. And isn't it wild how following this energy, we've got Mercury retrograding all of August because Mercury retrograde is about going inward. It's about gathering information. It's making sure you are very informed and you have clarity before you jump on something. And just as we complete that, Pluto returns to the last two and a half months in Capricorn. So September 1st through the middle of November, middle, I think it's around November 20th. So don't quote me on that. I'll put the exact dates in the description below. Pluto will return to 29 degrees of Capricorn 
where this full moon on July 21st is occurring, right? Pluto's going to be hovering over that point all of September, all of October, through around the 15th to the 20th of November. So for those of you that are wanting more time to figure out how to move through this, the universe is kind. It is giving you this time, okay? But what we're all facing with this is the ending of something and the the energy around it is Capricornian, isn't it? And it could be about the completion of a career, the completion of many years working for a certain company. You might be retiring in some form. You might be doing, making a very big move in your life from one home to another. You might be selling property, buying property. Capricorn is one of the signs of real estate, by the way. By the way. But it's also about where you put your money, where you invest your money and the time and it's also about the investment of time and so I'm inviting you all to really look at this deeply okay so before we get to the messages I want to talk about the Syrian activation portal that we're in right now we get it every year it's the precursor to the lion's gate so it's getting us all ready and here it is occurring in the energy of the new moon in cancer and cancer energy is all about following the heart and the emotions. Always asking yourself, where do you feel most home? Where is, what does home mean to you? Because cancer rules the hearth. And the hearth in ancient Greco-Roman world was where everyone gathered and they lit that flame and the family all gathered around the hearth. The community gathered around the hearth. They had communal hearths back in those days where everyone would come together. And the idea of the hearth is about building community, building family, and it's fire energy. So it's about following your passion here. So where does your pa true passion lie? What is home to you and what does that mean? And I like this because the Syrian gateway or portal is about our soul's journey. It's about our destiny. It's where our sun sign lines up perfectly with the giant sun, Sirius, which is in a galaxy far away, but to us, it's the brightest star in the Northern Hemisphere, in the sky, in the North. It's the brightest star. It's called the North Star, I believe is Sirius. It's our guide. It, it, you can look it up. It's in every religion. It's in a lot of mythology. Sirius in ancient mythos was the guide to the stars. It's about following your destiny. It's about something coming in that is fated, right? And so when we get that activation once a year, there's huge cosmic waves coming onto the earth right now, which are lighting us all up and they're giving us um, a golden pathway between our human self and our soul because Sirius is the spiritual sun for us. Our sun is our human or earthly sun because it illuminates and gives us life. Sirius is our spiritual sun. It is activating us and connecting us with our soul calling, our destiny as a cosmic being it is calling your soul forward right now. And the final activation is going to be on 7-7, seven, seven, which is a very powerful energy, right? And this year, with the number 8 for the Universal Year 2024, we have 7 and 7 and 14, with 8 is 22 what you decide to do this weekend and all of this weekend moving forward in July is you're creating your own home, whatever that is. Because as the master builder and the master architect, you are building what you want your life to really be, but you're doing it this time from a soul level. Or I'm going to suggest you're being given the opportunity to live your life from a higher version 
on a bigger timeline, a better timeline. You're, you're being given an opportunity to live bigger. That's the message I'm getting, okay? So let's look at the cards here to see what the messages are. Wow, okay. And these are from the Oracle of the Seven Energies because we're in the 7-7, seven, seven, we're in July, and I wanted to know what are the energies throughout this month. And the very first one we have is number four. Okay, four. 22 is four. Two and two is four. It's an earth energy. And the message is great and full. A lot of messages there, okay? So the energy is about filling up your own cup, but not only on the earthly, on the earthly plane or the material plane, it's how are you filling up your own cup emotionally, mentally, and at a soul level. This reminds me of the Ace of Cups and the Tarot. It's about radical self-love, radical self-nurturance. And great and full is an invitation for you to spend the time this month to look at what it is makes your cup feel full. What do you need to put into that cup so that you feel like you are enough? Because the real message from great and full is you came onto this earth. The minute you decided to come, you were already enough. Any accomplishments you've done, anything you've created, any lessons you've learned, challenges you've met time and time again, they're here to show you, you were always enough, always. So the true energy here is self-love, isn't it? And ask yourself, can I be in the energy of enough? What does it feel like to just sit in the energy of enough? Because when you're in that moment, that's when, when gratitude comes in, right? I have enough. Yeah, maybe I'm living month to month right now. However, every month I have enough. When you realize that your cup has always been full and now you're looking at it from different eyes and you can see that it's always been full, that's when your life will truly shift. That is the message here. It's time to be great and full in your life. The what did I say? You have an opportunity to live bigger, to live from a place of deeper richness. But that richness isn't an outer trapping. The richness comes from within your very being. Beautiful message. So the second one is, oh, we've got great again, and we've got big. Okay, there seems to be a theme here. Great, big love, number 26. And this is an energy of love. Oh, two and six is eight. Here we go, in an eight universal year, right? So perhaps the month of August is gonna be a powerful month for you. And the message is a great, big love. There's a beautiful love either already in your life, around you. Perhaps you haven't noticed it to the level that you could be noticing it for some of you. For others, I feel like there's a great big love coming into your life. Whether that's a beautiful new partnership, whether it's love or business, a beautiful new friendship. For some of you, I feel like it could be a baby. You're giving birth up to a beautiful child or you're getting pregnant. And that's a great big love. Wherever we are in our life though, wherever you fall into this scenario, creating more love in your current life is the actual message here. Decide that your life itself needs to be a great big love. And what would that look like if you lived life with a capital L? That love was the answer to everything you touched in your life. 
then your life would also transform, wouldn't it? So we've got some amazing cards here. We have the cup of love and we have the, a big love, right? With the direction being when you really understand that you are more than enough and you always have been. When you have that level of self-love and self-understanding, then that big love is naturally going to come into your life in whatever form. And I'm getting for some of you, it's with an animal, okay? Something's happening with the animals around you. You're getting a beautiful new cat or dog or other animal. So let's look at the third card. Ooh, now this is an interesting twist to the story. We've got smoke and mirrors, mirrors number 42, so which is a six, okay? smoke and mirrors. So in a way, what this is saying is everything is not as it seems, right? Look for the, look for what lies behind the mirror. And smoke and mirrors is also guiding you to look at what you hold as a perception, a belief, a truth, that is not actually real. Where in your life are there illusions that it's time for you to break through? And it, could it be within your own being that you have a belief system that is really not real? It's something you adopted for based on trauma or from childhood. Usually we adopt beliefs that are not real, that are illusions for self-protection. They serve a purpose in our life up until a certain time when it's time to now break through the illusion, break through the smoke and mirrors and recognize the truth of what really lies behind that. So this card is saying it's time to break through all illusions in your life, become the breaker of illusions, look for truth and clarity, even if it's challenging, because to see the truth even when it's jarring, is going to be far more helpful for you than to continue an illusion of something that is not really there. And I'm going to give you a beautiful example of that. And I'm sorry if this hits some of you directly. But, you know, the best example I can give you has to do with our love life. You know, when we have the illusion that our partner is faithful and yet something in us doesn't feel like they are, but yet we're happy with them and they show up for us, yet something in us keeps telling us something's not right here. And maybe there's signs all around us, but because we love them and we don't wanna change the way our life is going, we choose to ignore those signs. And this can be said too, when we have an alcoholic or an addict around us as a family member, a partner, a friend. It's coming to that clarity that yes, this person I love has a, has a problem and they need to seek help. It's not an easy place sometimes to break through illusions, yet this is the time for all of us to come face to face with our truth. And remember the biggest message here of all is when you really face your truth and what is real, you'll know what's meant for you. And if this friend or this family member, or this loved one turns around and walks out of your life because you faced them with this truth, then they are not meant for you anymore. Why? Because you now have jumped on to another timeline. And that timeline is not at a frequency that that loved one can exist with you on. That's why you are no longer in resonance. That's the word I use. You are now in dissonance. And so this is the guidance we're being given for July. Now, I also wanted to tap into the Starseed Oracle and just see what the cosmic messages are from the Starseeds. And we've got two. 
The first one is loosen your grip. So that's about all of us that hold on to things too tightly. And it's beautiful because it does kind of follow the smoke and mirrors. Don't hold on to anything too tightly. I think Buddha said, you will only lose what you cling to. Okay, I think that's what Buddha said. You can only lose what you cling to, right? <laughs> that makes sense. If you're not clinging to something, you can't possibly lose it, right? It's that adage of, if it was really meant for you, let it go. And then you'll know if it's meant for you, if it comes back. It's all about coping me mechanisms, density, addiction, and letting God in. Yep, it follows smoke and mirrors perfectly. So some of you might be dealing with someone who has an addictive pattern and you don't know how to cope with them. Maybe you've been using different coping mechanisms, but you've been living in a life where there's smoke and mirrors, things are not real, there's things you cannot see, you don't know really what's going on because the truth lies behind the mirror. And in order for you to cope, you've been holding on to what you can control. That's the message I'm getting for some of you. And so the message is instead, loosen your grip, surrender to the energy. But the energy of loosen your grip is surrender to the light. And when you surrender to the light, the density will start to leave. You're letting God in. It's time to let the divine in. Flow with your life. Allow your guides, your angels, the divine, your own inner guidance and, and intuition and your own soul to show you what you need to see. It's time to let go so that you can fly. Okay, you're becoming lighter. That's what that message is about. But to get there, you've got to simply let go and know that wherever you're gonna go, the divine has your back. The divine is that beautiful net that's going to catch you, okay? And the last card is here. Here is, I remember. Soul plan, the faded life versus the destiny life. Well, that's what all these cards are bringing us to, isn't it? We have a choice. In this energy, we have a choice. It's about our soul plan. Are you going to follow your destiny, which comes from your soul? Or are you going to follow your fate? I remember. Remember who you are. A beautiful friend said something to me very recently, very wise man. He said, if someone were to take away your name, your birth date, your age, your family, your culture, your religion, even possibly your language, who would you be? Who would you be? because that's taking away everything that has to do with fate. And now what you can be is your soul. It's what's destined for you. So the invitation here is to remember where you came from, to remember who you really are. Separate yourself from all of these things I just mentioned. Who are you without your parents, your family, who are you without that career or that college education or that high school diploma? Who are you without that house or all of that money in the bank? Who are you without your name, without your age, without your religion? That's when you go deep into finding out who you actually are because your soul is calling you now and you have a destiny that is awaiting you but to get there, you must go through the smoke and mirrors. You must loosen your grip on trying to control everything because ultimately in our lives, there's really nothing we can control except ourselves, right? So that's the ultimate truth. 
And in controlling ourselves, we control if we're going to react or are we going to respond. And that's it right there. We're standing now naked and transparent, aren't we? So let's look at the final guidance here from the Tarot. And then we'll complete this. Ooh, a lot of Tarot cards came out today. The moon. To pay attention to the, moon, the cycle of the moon right now. The new moons, the full moons. But this one, of course, is guiding us into the full moon. It's telling us that we are riding some pretty strong emotional waves right now from the new moons to the full moons and then back again. But the moon is also telling you right now to follow your intuition because the light of the moon is guiding the tides of the ocean. That's our emotional body. The answers you seek are not going to lie in your mind. They're going to lie in your intuition. Follow the moon. Let the moon be your guide. Now, the moon can also mean that there's things that are hidden from you right now, things that are coming to light, and they're going to come to light in the cycle of the next full moon. So from now going to the next full moon or the two weeks following that full moon. And yes, you've got the strength. Everything has brought you to this place. It's all about building your inner strength to know that what does not kill me has made me stronger. And, and it's funny because we have the moon card followed by strength, which ultimately is Cancer, Pisces, and Leo, right? You know, the moon in the Tarot is Pisces. However, I read it as both Cancer and Pisces. And the strength card is the lion. All of this is about July and August. The moon is our guide and strength is our torch. Oh boy, is it our torch. And then we're going into the master of orbs, which is the king of swords. We are cutting away all bullshit actually, <laughs> okay? We're cutting away everything that is not gonna take us where we wanna go. This is one of my favorite decks with the king of swords because he sits with a beautiful white and purple robe on, which is the sign of the ascended master. And he holds absolutely in perfect equilibrium, the sword of light. He is the master of orbs. What you are gaining in this month and the next is incredible clarity. And you will know exactly what in your life you need to cut out. But also the master of orbs is an incredibly good communicator. You're gonna find your words and you're gonna do it masterfully is what I'm getting. And then the fourth card is the star. Why? Because you're going towards your dreams. You are headed towards everything that you want in this life. Everything, the star. And this Syrian portal, the Lion's Gate portal, these are all moving you in that direction. You are moving towards your destiny. The star card is your destiny. Now the star card also is about self-healing. And on this journey, you're going to be going through a lot of self-healing, especially on a deep, profound emotional level, but also on a mental level. And I think the more clarity you get, the stronger you are going to feel mentally. You know, the master of orbs can also be telling you, go out and get more information. Seek the information, do the research that you need to do. So I wanted to get some clarifiers for these. So for the moon card, I got the nine of crystals, which is the nine of pentacles. This time is about you getting your wishes met. The nine of pentacles is, it's a very singular card. It usually means you've been very, working very hard at your career, your destiny, your life. And the nine of pentacles or the nine of crystals is usually someone who's been leading somewhat of a solitary life. Or if you're with someone, you've got a lot of your own space. You have a lot of your own alone time, which is good. And it helps the relationship stay good. Um, so you've been in a singular way for a while. And I feel like that's about to change because then we go 
to the Eight of Chalices, which, which is the eight, the eight of Cups. And that's the clarifier for the Strength card. So you're having the strength to walk away from what does not fill your cup. And we started with the great and full cup, didn't we? So you're walking away from anything that does not fill your cup. And you know what that is. And you have the strength now to do that or you are building up that strength to be able to do that. And it's okay if you have to be alone for a while, right? Because you know, the Nine of Pentacles is really radical self-love. You're going to have everything you need on this journey. That's what I'm getting. And then the clarifier for the Master of Orbs is the Seeker of Chalices, which is the Page of Cups. I feel like once you have clarity and you know exactly what you need to do and you're moving in that direction, there's going to be some beautiful offers of friendship or offers of love. These could be new friends, could be friends helping you, could be a beautiful love offer coming your way. The Seeker of Chalices, though, is saying there's, there's some beautiful cups of love that are going to be surrounding you on this journey. You are not going to be alone. Why? Because you're walking away from doesn't what doesn't fill your own cup. And then lastly, I got two clarifiers for the star. I have reflection and I have the lovers. Wow, we're ending with two major arcana. In fact, we've got a lot of major arcana here. This is about destiny when we have that many major arcana. So this reflection time that you're going through or you have been going through is going to bring you the true love in this life that you seek whatever that means for you, because the lovers is true love. And that could be true love with friends, could be true love in terms of romance, could be true love with children, and it could be true love with your animals. And I love it because the star and the lovers, you're getting, you're getting your dreams met. And it's all going to be around your cup being filled, okay? So I love, love these messages. I just wanted to complete with some extra advice from the Whispers of Love. This is the advice card. Act as if your partner is already here. So for those of you that are single or you're recently getting out of a relationship or soon to be doing so, you wanna act as if that true love is out there in the world and they're just either around the corner whenever you're ready or they're already here. But the other message is act as if it's already here. So let's say it's not about your love life, but it's about finances, it's about work, it's about having a child, a new home. Act as if what you really want is already here. That is a card of self-belief. And then receive with love and appreciation. So that message is saying, just be open. You need to be in the receptive mode and you need to start appreciating everything you have around you right now. So the card that followed that kind of goes hand in hand with it, treasure your loved ones. So receiving with love and treasuring your loved ones, the real message or the guidance is gratitude have deep appreciation and gratitude because that will make you, put you in the receiver mode of all of these beautiful stars. Oh yeah, that's like a star, right? That's trying to reach you. So when you go into the place of gratitude and deep appreciation and you open your, your heart and your mind and your hand to receive, you're going to receive everything you want treasure your loved ones also means a treasure is coming to you. That's what I'm getting. I feel like there is a blessing in disguise coming into your life, but you cannot see it. You can't see it. You're almost blinded to it right now, but it's coming. You might even sense that it's around the corner. There's a sense of something, but you don't know what it is right now. So guess what? Treasuring your loved ones also means be in the moment. 
have deep appreciation and love for all of the beautiful things you have in your life. And then what you need and what you truly desire will naturally find you. Alrighty, sending you all so much love and I will be posting some weekly reels up on my YouTube channel. So do be sure to check those out. I'm not gonna be sending any emails about it. So do just check my channel, you know, maybe once or twice a week to see if I have any reels up. And then I will look forward to seeing you for August messages. Sending you all so much love. And if you like the readings I do, you know, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. I love to hear from people. I do. I love to hear from people and how this resonates with you. And again, wishing you all an abundance of blessings.